wildling, an uncultivated plant or undomesticated animal. But surely there is more to this name, this mythological creature, than what others have told you? Look further and find the human in the monster for yourself. A 2018 American horror slash fantasy that uses puberty as a catalyst for extreme changes and mixing it with supernatural and monstrous means. But unlike other known films, like Ginger Snaps, this is following the story within a story format, following the main protagonist as things happen with her and around her. It's a confusing time, especially when the world is open for you to explore, and there are dangers on every corner. This is two takes, and this is one shot. Analysis of the film, Wildling. Spoilers are throughout. I must congratulate Anna, the protagonist, for being a blossoming young adult that perseveres throughout these traumatic events. She is, by far, the most matured and adaptable teenager ever. Think about it. She was kept in her daddy's attic from birth until he stunted her growth by stopping her menstrual cycle using ejections until she basically asked for him to kill her. He shoots himself instead, and then Anna is found by Sheriff Ellen Cooper, Liv Tyler, given shelter and a somewhat structured living environment. This enabled Anna to explore this open world that is bigger than her bedroom window could ever show her. Her change from child to a woman, from human to wildling, to not loving her so-called daddy turned wildling hunter, to being sexually active, emphasises Anna's resourcefulness and acceptance in the face of many adversaries. She could have been her own worst enemy, but instead she greeted this change within her physically, even letting Ray come along for a bit of the ride, until she realised he would die because he's human and slow. She let go her apparent love for her daddy, who happens not to be her father in the first place, quite easily. And I'm not surprised. Anyone knowing and loving the story within a story formats would have understood immediately, even in the opening lines when her daddy tells her a scary story at the age of five, which is just bad parenting, would have known something was off, especially when the doorknob is electrified so she can't leave the room. Being confined to one room for your entire life has you trusting the hand that feeds you up to a certain point. What do you have to go on? Daddy tells Anna about the wildling and how she is the last of her kind. Using a fear factor to keep a child compliant is the oldest trick in the book, and after Anna is able to explore her options, she learns to adapt quite quickly. Using, I must add, silence and direct questions, especially when Daddy comes back with scars and basically says she was a mistake, that she should kill herself, makes Anna unpredictable. Her face doesn't give anything away when calculating her next steps and this is perhaps the first of many changes from human to other. There is a lot going on at the same time for Anna, and I congratulate her for having the balls to be more human about it than many teenagers. She takes it on the chin and dishes out what she can to those who deserve it. Puberty, for anyone, especially Anna who doesn't know what it actually is, is a daunting prospect. But unlike Ginger Snaps, when the sisters believe these changes are supposed to be natural, when Ginger is actually changing into a werewolf, has Anna, for a while, at odds with herself and her urges. Taylor Ryan, borrowingtape.com, explains it further through an interview. At the core, Wildling is a coming-of-age story. It's about the strange phase in life we all go through called puberty when we find ourselves at odds with the rest of the world. Except in Anna's case, it goes a lot further. But since puberty is a biological process, it just didn't make sense to load our story with magic tropes such as amulets or silver bullets. Also, puberty is irreversible, whereas your typical werewolf shifts back to, into human shape once the full moon disappears. Even though wildlings are fictional, we design them as if they were an actual species. The werewolf has had many changes from its origins. From being another form for a vampire, to being its servant, to being its own monster by the changing of the moon, a scratch, a bite could turn you. From a human into a beast older than time, from teenage werewolf to a lycanthrope in Underworld, there are many adaptations of this mythical beast. And thankfully, this is not another one of those films that fall ever so easily into the werewolf trope, 
using puberty as a metaphor for its transformation. It's less about the transformative state the female protagonist goes through, and more about their biology and the primitive nature that sets Anna apart from the humans around her. Blood is thicker than water, and so, the traits from her deceased mother obviously carry on in her veins. What she chooses to do with it is the story. And unlike a werewolf, there isn't animalistic impulses or bloodlust. This isn't the story about losing control. Anna retains most of her humanity, and it's the aspect of finding a sense of freedom from all of the people around her. She isn't trying to prove a point, but rather trying to find herself in the suburban landscape she finds herself thrust in. The surroundings are placed in a nondescript town with forest, flowing rivers and hidden caves, enhancing this tale of the wilderness with a transforming wildling. Its nondescript location is intentional. The importance lies between the lines of wilderness and suburbia and what Anna the human, now turned wildling, chooses and does with it. These different environments present the ease of how Anna, now forming into the folklore creatures she was told to fear, is projecting her abilities, or strength, speed and stealth, all necessary things when hunting for prey. A wildling is most definitely a hunter, a predator. However, it still projects a certain humanistic approach, much like our ancestors, the Homo habilis, or the Neanderthals. It goes back to the basics of hunting when hungry, finding shelter when tired, and essentially taking care of its young, its own body grown and shaped to adapt to its environment. And if you look close enough, although it has traits of being like a werewolf, it doesn't necessarily hunt humans. When Anna is changing into her wildling form, she only kills because they are hunting her first. And this is an aspect that I felt that many reviewers did not pick up. Anna, as a wildling, only hunts those who are hunting her in an act of self-preservation. And later on, when the wildling hunters are on a trail, we realise she's preserving herself and her unborn child. Let's take a moment to think about this in a human way. Anna, being drugged to the point of never having a period, stopped her growth into a woman, is suddenly, after her first sexual experience, pregnant. And to top that all off, the main theme of the film, her transition to a true form of wildling, ugh, this can be seen as slightly too much. But Anna, in a blue-eyed wonder, takes it under her stride and piece things together quite quickly. The dialogue is a little lacklustre to bring forth Anna's mindset, However, her actions, her expectant visual cues, especially with food, emphasises a childlike hunger and wonderment on what is happening around her. But don't be fooled by her young looks. She knows what she is doing. The final form of Anna as a wildling, when she is in the snow under the northern lights, reminds me of another meaning of the word wildling. If I asked you, what would you think about first? This film? or the Game of Thrones series that includes the wildlings or free folk beyond the wall. To be honest, I wouldn't blame you if you thought of the latter. There are similarities in actions and how they work, especially in the aspect of them living in the snow outside any other human influence. From what can be gathered from the film that explores a wildling, in contrast, Game of Thrones free folk are named wildling by quite literally everyone south of the wall, the land of men. They are seen as lawless, primitive, and are killers, but let's go further. Both Anna and the Free Folk do not govern any laws, follow who they wish, survive by taking what they can and keep what they can defend. The land they are on is not governed by them. They are nomadic and hunt and sleep when necessary. It's almost like a hidden message of when a series or a film present this kind of historical emphasis of nomadic existence. The Native American Indians, being the most remembered race of people who were nomadic and used everything when killing a beast, has this aspect been repeated, if only a little, through being a race of people, or in Anna's case, a race of something other, that finds a way of living that can be considered outside of the norm to anyone else. Anna, as a wildling, the free folk, Native American Indians, all, in one point, are or were seen as unnatural, primitive, uncultured, and wrong in the way they govern their lives. Where there are laws, where there are boundaries, there is less freedom. 
and with the town that held these wildling hunters. Anna needed to find the space to be herself. Her change, the attempts made to try to manage both her supernaturalism and sexual urges, pin Anna as capable. Without direction, Anna finds herself and fights for her life as well as that of her unborn child. From stepping out of the attic into the human world, she turned her back on it, finding solstice and attraction to the Northern Lights, her true home. She had to answer the call of the wild that was making her leave the only people she knew, for the safety of herself and them, but most of all, for the freedom that the wild could give her. If you enjoyed what was said, please follow me on Anchor, Spotify and other podcasting platforms for the latest episode. And be kept in the loop through my Instagram at two takes underscore podcast. If you want to help me in the making of each episode, there is a listener support platform that can benefit the levelling up of this podcast, as well as have you, the supporter, having access to extra content. Find this at anchor.fm slash two takes podcast slash support. And as always, thanks for listening.